got another set of questions for the amount of substance topic and as always the link to the questions is in the description of the video if you want to try them first okay so we'll make a start so you can see i've already put the titles in just really important that you include the zeros on the first one and the third one so imagine the temptation would be to leave them out you can't do that to get the mean tight row, we'll look at concordant results. You can see that the first and the third one are concordant because they're within 0.1 cm cubed of each other. So we'll just take the average of those. So the mean tight row is 24.25 cm cubed. So moving on to the calculation of the concentration. So the first thing we'll do is work out the moles of sodium carbonate that have been used. So that's just concentration times volume. Just remember that your volume needs to be in decimeters cubed. The moles of HCl is going to be twice as many because of the ratio in the equation. So that's 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And the concentration of the HCl is the moles divided by the volume. The volume is going to be that main titra. And again, just remember that the volume needs to be in decimeters cubed. So the concentration comes out the three significant figures at 0.309. Moving on to the next question, so we've got butane and chlorine reacting together. Some of the hydrogens in the butane have been replaced by chlorine and made compound E. The only thing we need to work out is its MR, so we can work out how many chlorines are actually in the, um, on those four carbons of the butane skeleton. So what's unusual about this question is we're not using the regular molar gas volume at RTP of 24 decimeters cubed per mole. We've got this information here that under the conditions used for this experiment, the molar gas volume is 32.5 decimeters cubed per mole, and that we've obtained 78 cm cubed of E. So the first thing that you do is put the uh, make the units consistent. So I'm going to put the volume into decimeters cubed, so it matches with the dm cubed in this molar gas volume. So now we've done that, we can work out how many moles of E that is. So moles equals the volume we've got divided by this molar gas volume. So it's coming out of 2.4 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of E. Well, we know the mass of E, so we can work out the MR, mass over moles. So that's coming out of 265. So next thing we're going to do is take off the MR of 4 carbons, which is 48 which leaves 217 for the chlorines and the hydrogens left on the molecule. So next thing I want to do is divide by the MR of chlorine, which is 35.5, which is basically telling us that there are six chlorines in this halogenoalkane. So now we know we've got those four carbons and six chlorines. The remaining atoms must be hydrogen, which means there must be four hydrogens. So the molecular formula was C4Cl6H4. Moving on to the next question, you can see I've already made a start. So the first thing I want to do is work out how many grams of the hydrated salt we used at the start of the experiment. So that's the mass of the crucible with the hydrated salt in minus the mass of the empty crucible. You can see which is coming out at 2.69 grams. The next mass we'll calculate is the mass of anhydrous strontium chloride. So that's obviously the mass of the crucible at the very end of the experiment minus the mass of the empty crucible, that's coming out at 1.62 grams. So I'm turning that into an equation. So I've got my two masses that I've just calculated. And to get the mass of water, well, it's obviously going to be the difference between these two numbers, which is coming out at 1.07 grams. So all I need to do now is divide both of these by their respective MRs to get the moles of each chemical present, and then just divide by the smallest to get the ratio. So there's my two mole values. Remember to keep these to three significant figures at an absolute minimum. All I need to do now is divide by the smallest. So I'm dividing that by itself and that by that. So that's giving me a ratio of 1 to 5.823529 dot dot dot. So I'm not putting the full calculator value in. Now in most questions on hydrated salt calculations, you would express this to the nearest whole number. So you'd say a 1 to 6 ratio. However, they've asked for it to two significant figures. So the answer is going to be 5.8.
So the question finishes with a couple of practical skills type questions. So why is the student taking four readings of the mass of the crucible and residue? Well, that's obviously to make sure that all the water has been driven off and they've gone to constant mass. So to help me explain the second part of this, I've got the formula there for how we calculate percentage uncertainty. So it's the uncertainty of the apparatus, so the balance in this case, divided by the mass of the substance used, multiplied by 100. So how do we make this number smaller? Well, we could make this denominator bigger, so we could use a greater mass of hydrated salt. And the other way we can make the percentage uncertainty lower is to make this number lower. So how do we do that? We use a more accurate balance. So they've used a two decimal place balance. We could use a three decimal place balance, which obviously has a lower uncertainty. Moving on to the last question. So the first thing we'll do is work out how many grams of this hydrated magnesium nitrate we're gonna use. So the first thing we'll do is get the moles from concentration times volume. Remember the volume's got to be in decimeters cubed, so that's coming out at 0.1 moles. So now we just need to work out the mass by multiplying the moles by the MR of that. So the MR was 256.3, so we need 25.63 grams. So we'll just go through the steps now for the making of a standard solution. So the first thing we need to do is weigh out this number of grams using a two decimal place balance. Then we'd need to dissolve the salt in a small volume of distilled water. Next thing we need to do is transfer the dissolved salt into a 250 cm cubed volumetric flask. And then to make sure we've got all of the dissolved salt out of the beaker, we'd rinse the beaker with distilled water and add the washings to the volumetric flask. So just to help with my explanations, I've drawn what that's going to look like. So this is my volumetric flask. So we've got roughly that much of the dissolved salt in the volumetric flask at the moment. We need to get it up to that mark there. That's called the graduation mark. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue adding the distilled water until we get very close to the graduation mark. So it's going to look something like this now. So the solution's up to here. Next thing we do is using a dropper, we're going to add more distilled water so that the base of this meniscus is on that graduation mark, on that line. So it's going to look like that now, and the final thing we need to do is put a stopper on and shake the flask to make sure it's all mixed together. And finally this calculation, so the first thing we're going to do is work out how many moles of this magnesium nitrate there are in 5 grams, so it's just mass over MR. So the MR is coming out at 148.3, so we've got 0 0.0337 moles. Here's the ratio now to work out how many moles of nitric acid we're going to need. So it's obviously twice as many. So that's 0 0.0674 moles of nitric acid. So the volume of acid needed is moles divided by concentration. The important thing to note here is that this volume is currently in decimeters cubed. They want it in centimeters cubed. So we need to multiply this by a thousand. So the three significant figures, we need 38.5 centimetres cubed of the acid.